Hello everyone, welcome to SAP Technomaniac. In my last video, we have discussed how to create one OData data service from SAP to expose the data outward of SAP. We have created one SEGW project. Inside that, we have defined one entity set and entity type to expose the employee data from SAP to outer world. And we have for that particular project, we have generated the MPC, DPC, MPC extension and DPC extension classes and one service as well. That service we have registered inside the same system because we have embedded deployment option and we try to see the metadata for that particular service. We were, except, we were successfully seeing that metadata. But when we try to access the data of employee from that particular service, we were getting the error, the employee entity set method is not defined. It is not uh, implemented like that. We were getting the error. So in this video, what we will do, we will try to understand the MPC, MPC extension. That means model provider class and model provider class extension, DPC, DPC extension, data provider class and data provider class extension in detail and we will read the data from the SAP through the service in the browser or we can say SAP outer world. Browser is the SAP outer world only. Let's get started. In my last video, what we did, we created the this project G employee underscore 002. Inside this project, we created the entity type called employee and entity set called employee set. Inside the employee, you can see we define the all the properties using the structure or we can say the tab table which we having the information like the all the properties like employee ID, name, CT. This derived from the structure called or you can say this derived from the table. Let me open slash and SC11 C employee RAM. Display this table. We created that particular entity type using this table. What we want to do? We want to expose this table data outward of SAP. That is the reason we have created that O data project. And once we have created the O data project, we have generated all the runtime artifacts or runtime objects. It created the, if you increase this little bit, it created the DPC, DPC extension class, MPC, MPC extension class, service and model, technical model. So this we have done. Since it is the embedded system, we can maintain or register service from here. We clicked here or you can go to the, if you are not working in the embedded deployment option, if you are working in central hub deployment option, in that case, what you can do, you can go to the that particular central hub system and you can open the that mant forward slash mant forward slash uh, sorry forward slash iwfnd forward slash mant underscore service t code and you can maintain your service now what i will do uh, i have already opened this service maintenance t code and we what we did in my last video we access the data through the browser we saw the metadata, we compare with the north wind, how the metadata got displayed in the north wind service. In same way, we also see our employee set or employee type, or we can say entity set or entity entity type data in metadata format. It's giving all the characteristics. But what we did, we tried to access the data using this employee set always we access the data using entity set name not entity type name this is the internal table which will contain the so we have to give this particular url uh, i explain i will explain one more time uh, so what is the this is url containing this is the host name and this is the port and this host name is as of now alias name i have put uh, here instead of alias name i have put actual server name which you can find when you maintain in the system. Uh, sometime if you put this name, it will not work in the browser. You have to put your server name, then the port name, and this is the SICF path. 
of your which your service is creating and this this is the how this is called the uh, url uh, uniform resource locator where actually your uh, resources exist and using this we can access our data and we access the metadata now i want to access my employee set entity i want to read the data from the database but the problem is that i'm getting one error here you can see the error detail there is some internal error and there is error detail is given employee underscore employee set underscore get entity set method is not implemented so to give the data to the outer world of sap we have to do some coding so we have to face the data from the table and we have to provide the data to the outer world of sap to provide the data we have to do the coding but where so as i told you whenever we create the O data project or we will generate the runtime artifacts that time this all the runtime artifacts like dpc dpc extension class mpc and mpc extensions class code generated what basically this dpc and mpc class is having whatever we have defined in this particular uh, scgwt code using the tool based things we define a lot of properties it will be converted into the coding form let me see how it will look like so if you open uh, eclipse i will be switching more between the eclipse and gui so i more i like to more code in the eclipse because it's class based approach you easy to code you will see how we can how much easy we can code using the eclipse that is the reason so we have this four classes one is 002 underscore this is the our project this are this these are the four classes uh, one is the dpc dpc extension mpc and mpc extension we will try to understand what what this class is actually having so first class is dpc this data provider class you can see and in this dpc class obvious obviously always remember don't change dpc and mpc classes whatever we have to write we have to write in the dpc extension class or mpc extension class why as soon as you change some data model here suppose you want to add some more property here or you want to delete some property in as soon as you will click on the runtime generate runtime object this will modify your dpc and mpc class it will regenerate those dpc and mpc class and whatever you did manually in this dpc and mpc classes it will be erased and the new dpc mpc classes will be available so make sure never code in dpc and mpc class once you have coded and you try to modify your uh, project in scgw you want to add some property you want to delete or you want to make update table sortable whatever you want to do after doing that you have to regenerate your project as soon as you regenerate pro regenerate your project whatever you have done in your coding that will vanish so never change mpc and dpc class or whatever you have to do the changes you have to do in mpc extension class and dpc extension class first we will try to understand the mpc class model provider class which actually providing us the model so as you can see this particular model provider class is any inherited from this particular cl mgw push abs model and each model provider class which will be going to generate will be the and inheriting from this one if you create new project that also will be uh, inherited from this particular class if you do uh, f2 on this class if you want to see the detail of this class you can click on the f2 and you can see the lot of detail there are uh, what all are the methods are there what all are the strings and all the values you can abstract push model provider so this class is inherited from this one and not only that you can see the other details also first detail is that uh, so you can see cl underscore project name underscore mpc how this particular class name generated whatever the you have to put zcl and the project name your project name was the the employee underscore 002 uh, that is the reason this is the project name uh, and underscore mpc and this will be generated new name of your uh, 
this particular MPC class, how the MPC class name generated that I just want to show. So wherever you have written the SAP Technomaniac, I have written those code lines, uh, those commented lines, so I can explain you easily. So once I will regenerate this particular project, that time these old lines will be the old commented line will be removed because this is I did in MPC class. That also I will show you. The project name is the name project in the service builder. That is the main important thing. And whatever we have created the entity type, you can see I created the entity type G employee underscore now that type of one of the structure they have created one of the table they have created TT underscore employee. And since I have imported from those all the data, uh, I have created the entity type using the imported from the object like G employee underscore RAM table. So that is the reason you can see this this kind of uh, table creation and the uh, structure creation happen here they are using further in the code so not only that i will show you some of the very important there are mainly three methods you can see one is the load text element second is the define method third is the get last modified method in the mpc class whenever you will generate the classes these three methods will be up, uh, available most important is define method so you can see uh, this define method and the get last modify they are redefining these methods and they are generating code here redefining if you see your parent class this is the parent class of this particular mpc class in this class those methods are available if i open here this particular parent class and if i try to show you in parallelly this parent class you can see uh, those particular methods, defined methods are already available, which we are redefining here. Okay, either it's, it's coming from here or this is also having further one more parent class that is, uh, that is again, they are inheriting from another parent class and uh, this get class modified, I think coming from there. So no, no, no need to go in that much depth, just we have to learn about first defined method. So inside the defined method, you can see I again I have write this all the commented line uh, that was not there previously. So what they are defining, they will define all the uh, things which you have defined in SEGW. Suppose you created one complex type that will be here. Suppose you have created entity type, we have created one entity type. So that is the reason employee entity type we have created. So that is the reason you can, you can see define underscore employee here. All the ent entity types will be there all the association will be there which if you have created association all the entity sets association set and function import this all things will be available in this particular defined method because as soon as you generate that particular SEGWT code inside the defined method automatically code will be generated and that will be placed so i in our case we have defined the, this particular uh, employee entity set and employee uh, employee entity set and entity type employee ent entity type and employee set as a entity set so you can see this coding here so if you open further define employee each entity i can see one method uh, inside this method if you see define employee uh, they they have the further code in the define employee so it it is generated here when we clicked on the this particular uh, button called generate runtime artifacts when you click on this particular button the time that score is generated based on whatever you have defined here so you can see further define employee inside the define employee you can see the first thing they have defined the create entity type so we have created entity type and um, that entity type name was the employee so using this particular uh, model class they have created the uh, model method they have created the entity type if you if you see if you do the f2 you can see further detail what is the type reference so it is the what is the type of this particular uh, uh, method so in this case a uh, particular uh, class actually this is the interface and from the interface they are defining the method so we have created the entity type the employee is the entity type once we created this entity type we have inside this entity type we have created different different properties you can see first property was the currency and the second property was the salary and what is the what is the type of that particular anti property and what is the land it is nonable or not everything defined here so this coding is automatically generated uh, how it got generated 
whatever the value you will give here based on that if it is nullable or not if it is filterable or not updatable or not sortable or not based on this detail this coding will be uh, generated here so all the properties one by one you can see department company name city name all the properties got generated employee id everything and you can see employee id we defined as a key field so they have uh, make set is key that method they have used and made this as a key this is the model provided class inside that and again since we define this all the properties based on some structure so that is structure or table we can say is z employee underscore ram we they have binded also that particular structure to this particular entity type again uh, once we created entity type we have again we have created entity set as well so that for that also codes go, go generated create entity set name entity set name is the employee set and again there are further things they have defined it is filter is required a lot of things we are going to discuss uh, in upcoming videos but these are the basic how the this particular defined class we have to understand obviously uh, some uh, in for in if we are creating the odata v4 service we have to understand this all the things because we have to write manually this code sometime okay uh, so that second method is get last mo modified uh, you can see this method defined here get last modified you can see again redefine but that basically it will be having the when the last time you your o data service got generated means you when whenever you when the last time you have clicked not service generated sorry whenever you when you last time clicked on the generate uh, runtime artifacts that date will be date and time will be uh, we can get using this get last modified the method and we have one more method that is final we can't further redefine this method in the subclasses we can see if you are aware about the oops concept we have we should know the oops con concept if you are not uh, if you are working in all data because everything here class and methods only so if we are further we are calling this class which we are doing in this particular class we are inheriting in the mpc extension class you can see this particular mpc class we are inheriting the uh, inheriting in mpc extension class so we have to make sure in we can't redefine this method because this this method is final but we can redefine this particular define method and get last modified if you want to do okay and as i told you get last modified method it will get the when last time we have generated this particular object obviously last time when i was video created 2023 january 29 it was generated last time and what was the time that time that we can see and uh, this load tax element data is, as i told you this final method no need to me this method is set as a final in the mpc class and is required for internal level handling this you can see and it will give you us the latest time stamp so these comments i i only return so we can easily understand this is all about the mpc class so basic thing so whenever you generate any project this mpc class will be generated and this all will be the same methods only this define methods will modify based on how many entities entity types you will define how many entity sets you will define based on that you can see multiple methods over here that we each time when we generate in future videos we will so i will show you this mpc class so as of now mpc extension is blank because we didn't do any coding in upcoming video if required we will do and we will, i will show you and same way we have the model sorry dpc class data provider class and the dpc extension class so same way the dpc extension class is uh, inherited from this particular dpc class the, so this is the subclass of this particular parent class and dpc what is having the inside the dpc class so obviously we should not change this particular dpc class as i told you and the service builder override the content of the base class when you re, when it regenerate this particular project inside this dpt dpc class which error we got uh, what error we got employee set underscore get entity set method is not implemented that we can do here because you can see get entity set uh, the, this is having some of the methods called get entity set this is again they are redefining for from this particular super class and inside this get entity set if you uh, 
see this gate entity set method further. Uh, this particular gate entity set method. Let me click here. So if you see further inside this gate entity set method, you you can see your all employee sets, uh, your all entity sets. As of now in this project, only one employee set is available. One entity set is available. You can see this code only. So if it is regarding, so they are defining here uh, how you can get the data. So further you can see uh, in this particular call the entity set generated method. So it will call the uh, employee set whenever uh, they, whenever the gate entity set method call for the employee set entity type uh, entity set then it will call the employee set get entity set. If I click on this particular get entity set method currently it is raising the method employee employee set underscore get entity set is not implemented. If you see this method, uh, they are raising this particular message because we didn't do any implementation as of now. This particular not implemented in data provider class. So this is the data provider class. Again, I will try to explain in the same way like we have get entity set, we have get entity, update entity, get entity set to get the multiple data and get entity, get entity to get the single line or single row and update entity if you want to modify some data, create entity if you want to create the data in the system and delete entity to delete the data. These all are the method. Inside these methods, based on, uh, you can see, you will be going to see how many, uh, you will be going to see the all the entity types you defined or all the entity sets you defined in, in the your SAP SCGWT code, those all entity set code will be there. So, so one more code I will see if you call this get, get entity, if you see again get entity method. So as of now we have the entity set name is employee set. If you have multiple ent uh, entity sets, so there will be some, suppose I want to get the customer data, so customer set will be there. I want to get the uh, use other in product data, so product set will be there. So like that we can have multiple entity set inside this particular uh, entity set name we are calling the respective method to get the data for from that particular entity set so this we have to implement obviously uh, if you click here uh, get entity and get entity set i can't modify here if i modify i if i comment here and if i write code here obviously it will work but as soon as when we generate project using this button these generate, generate runtime artifacts everything will get vanish because it's a dpc class so what i have to do i should not write any code here so this all method will be the since this method if you see uh, let me go up since all are the method is a protected in the protected section so public sections means it can be used in any class so protected sections means it can be used in subclass. So uh, what is our subclass? This MPC extension is our subclass. So we can access those method and we can redefine uh, particular this MPC. Uh, one second, extension. Uh, so in this case, we can redefine this particular create entity set and we can write our own code instead of running this particular code. So that we can do. So we have to write our code in DPC extension class. So this is all about DPC, MPC and DPC extension and MPC extension. Make sure never write the code DPC and MPC class, always write the code in the extension because those in the extension classes will be not regenerated every time we will, we will generate the runtime artifacts using the, the runtime artifacts generate button. So that's very important. Now, now to solve this error. So how we can solve this error, employee get entity set is not implemented. We have to implement the employee get entity set in uh, data provider extension class. So what I will do, uh, first let me minimize this one. And since we have to do the, use the DPC and DPC extension class, let me close MPC and MPC extension class as of now. And let me open DPC class over here parallelly. So we can see both the things parallelly. So we have to implement get entity set method for employee entity type. 
So as you can see, uh, the method get entity set method, if you see here, there are in the protected section, there are multiple uh, methods implemented in DPC class. One is the create entity, uh, second is the delete entity for deletion of the entity, third is the get entity to get the single line. And since we are getting this error, employee set get entity set, we have to redefine this method. And this is in protected section. So we have to redefine this particular method in protected section only. You have to do enter in protected section and you have to write methods and you have to M E E M P and control space you will do. Then you will get uh, all the value help. In this case, I want to redefine this method and you can write redefinition. And in this way, you can redefine. This is how we do in Eclipse. It's very easy. And there is one another way if you're using GUI, you can open SE24, this particular class, just click on redefine button, button. Uh, there also you can do redefine. But this is how we have to learn the Eclipse. Just you have to do control one. I want to implement this method, add implementation, implementation added. Error got removed and let me put breakpoint over here. Let me do set F1 first one, first. And what I can do, let me put breakpoint. Uh, first, I will put hard coded breakpoint uh, with my user ID, technome, niek. And let me see what data is coming when I am calling uh, this particular uh, entity set method. As I told you, if you see this particular, select this method and you click on the next annotation button. Uh, and as of now, it's not nowhere going. Or you can click on this particular method where it is called. It is just raising this particular exception. And if you see further where it is called, okay, let me select uh, ABAP occurrence and try to do now. That's it. So you have to always make sure whenever you're doing ABAP occurrence, you have to select. So wherever, uh, if, if it is particular method or variable used multiple time, you can quickly jump from one place to another place. That is again, you have to do in Eclipse. That's very easy. You can come down again. Here it is called from where it is called in this method, it is called where they have redefined this particular uh, get entity set method inside that uh, we as I told you employee set method inside that we have employees get entity set. So they are calling this method currently and we are getting this error. They are raising exception. We are getting error. This method is not implemented. We can't do implementation here because it's a DPC class. I want to unlock this one. I don't want to change this data anything here. So you can click on control U, it will unlock. You can go to how to go in Eclipse editable to display mode. You can cl click on control unlock or control L, control U and control L. You can go to the display mode and editable mode like that. You can see this is I'm editing. That is the reason lock is there above the class lock. You can see this symbol here. There is no lock. So that means it is display mode and this is editable mode giving tips eclipse it, it is always helpful so here currently we are getting this error we redefine this particular uh, get entity set method in our subclass we have redefined this one here and we have to write our own code so what needs to send what it is asking for us it is asking for the entity set data employee data it is asking we have to send back the employee data you want to see importing exporting parameter no no need to switch here and there just you have to do f2 it's again advantage of the Eclipse. You can see what all are the importing parameter and what all are the exporting parameter. It's very helpful to work in Eclipse. So you can see entity name. We will be needing what we will be needing. We have to get the data from the system. Just we have to get and we have to fill this entity set tab. So I will write one select statement. I will show you in debug mode also. So select it's again from here and onwards normal ABAP code. So no need to worry. Select all uh, from uh, so if you see the what is the type of this particular return table, we, we are returning uh, entity set, uh, it's type of TT underscore employee and it, it's type of TS underscore employee and TS employee is further type of Z employee underscore RAM table. So let me go back again. Uh, you can click uh, again, you can do F2 and you can copy this one either to declare the your table type, control C or I just want to select from this table it's a little bit slow let me go here let me so go go here and let me copy this one control c select from this table and let me into not inner join i don't want inner join into table and uh, this table should be 
again i will do f2 to copy this entity et underscore entity set control c this is the table i want to and that's it nothing else i want to do this this is only if control space size of us is with initial tabasi is initial except f1 then fine otherwise if size of us is not initial i can display some other mess other error message or i can display uh raise exception any business exception or technical exception that also you can do you can sue you can do f2 you can raise the two type of exception here one is the business exception and one is the technical exception in this case it is a business exception exception because we are not having data in the system so that's it i i think so let me activate this one control f3 uh let me open this particular class uh let me execute now get entity set method i have breakpoint uh, i have let me open here slash osc24 and so you in s i just want to show you this class in sc24 also dpc extension class if you open this one and see you can see we already uh, redefined this particular get entity set method or if you want to put breakpoint here uh, you you can put the, here currently it is already i have the breakpoint uh it's okay uh you can put the breakpoint uh, again uh, you always make sure you whenever you are calling from browser always put the uh external breakpoint it will help always if you don't have okay fine it got placed the external breakpoint now what i will do uh, i will call this particular instead of uh, i will call this particular uh, service from the browser let me call first from the here itself execute this one i want to get the entity set z employee set and let me execute now here the debugger will trigger so i can see breakpoint got triggered you can do f5 and if you see this entity type here i got i fill the data here and when i do f8 i will get the data before going to that there are some importing and exporting parameter you always have to see you have to go to the locals you can see what all are the importing parameter you can see this is the importing parameter and you can see the exporting parameter also if it is any uh, there will be some exporting parameter also you can see this is exporting parameter so based on that you have to write your own code so here we no need any data i know just i have to send the day i have to send all the entity set uh, in this i have to fill in this particular entity set so i already know i have already filled there but if you uh, if you have filtering applied or some sorting applied then based on that you have to see these all the tables and based on that you have to write the code as of now i don't want to go that much deep so just we have got the data if you do f8 you can see uh, status code is 200 it's little bit slow let it run i got the data you can see uh, it's in xml format uh, as per my assumption it will be better uh, we open this particular uh, this particular entity set in the browser so we will see in better way so you can see i just copy this one control c uh, as i told you control v so i can the server name is little bit different uh there is something called uh, let me see my server name so that server name again i have to see here i can click on edit uh, let me copy this one control c cancel and let me copy here this server name host name i can see and employee set and the port number then sic a path it will ask for password obviously i don't uh, it's not open it will always ask for password i will click on okay now i think so debugger will trigger because we have all the breakpoint uh, uh, that particular place and once we do f8 uh, we will be able to see the data in the browser as well not only browser wherever you are accessing the data uh, you will be able to see the data let me close this one Uh, so it will quickly open that debugger. I switched off uh, that particular debugger in the 
clips because it's not working properly it's an older version that is the reason it is now open in gui only i did app it i got the data you can see it's in xml format because i'm using the extension called this xml uh, tree this is the extension it's display the particular xml in prettier format so i can see all the data again i have the employee id 1 and other detail employee id 2 and other detail employee id 3 and other detail like that i can see all the data for that particular employee set i'm not getting that error if this particular method is not implemented because i have implemented uh, this set get entity set method and so here one one of the one important thing let me open notepad uh, so let me open notepad so you have to remember this uri which uri called which method because it's very important for us to see so let me close that lot, lot of xmls so let me control z so let me copy from here again control c control c let me copy here this particular url we are calling employee said which method it is calling it is calling get entity set method so you have to remember this thing always because this will call get entity set method suppose in this case uh, we are calling all the data together i just want to access uh, the one entity set only i don't want to access the entire data from this particular uh, employee set in this case i got all the data from this particular table and it got displayed if it is it would have thousand but at a time i want to display one data or there is the need of the data i want to display i, I when i click on that button only this particular uh, record should be fetched in this case what we have to do uh, we have to pass the uh, key field because key field will be having the uh, based on key field we will be having the one record so in this case suppose i want to get access only the record number 2 employee id 2 uh, you can see here if you see on the employee id 2 you will be having some url call or, or you can just what you have, you can do you have to write small bracket and you can write two now it should fetch only the second employee but it is telling that this particular method is not implemented it's again very important if you want to access the data only single entry then which method is called this is the your url or uri you can say and this time it is calling this method employee set but this method is now not implemented we have to implement this method also to get the data so to for doing the implementation of this method what we have to do same thing uh, we already know currently this error is coming from the employee set get entity data uh, get entity set we already redefined that is the reason this code is not executing now this code is executing instead of that and now we have to redefine this method also so what we can do again we have to call one another method we have to redefine one another method so what you can do emp and you can do control space and get entity method you have to redefine get entity and you have to write redefinition and control one it will give you help in eclipse aid implementation for this particular method so in this case if you see again if you want to see the importing exporting and changing parameter you just have to click on f2 you can see we have entity name entity set name short name so as of now i have to return one entry because uh, so this all the importing data where it it will build from build from based on your url whatever the url is there based on that url this all the tables or these all the importing parameter will be filled we have to use those importing parameter and we have to get the data from the system and we have to send back that that particular data to the uh, front end or whichever the browser who whoever consuming this particular o data service we have to send them this data so in this case as i uh, what additional thing we are sending this particular number two where i will get this particular number two i will be needing to fetch this particular number two data from the system so as you can see if you do have to uh, there is something called it key table 
it will be having this particular number two. I will show you in the debug mode also. So always when once you will not understand, uh, just put the simply the breakpoint control C, control V, and this time I don't think so. We will be having the uh, if you do have to, we will not having entity set. In this case, we have ER entity. We have to fill the ER entity instead of entity set. ER entity means single entry. But in this case, I have to do some, select single obviously and the table is not required into this particular ER entity but I have to pass some where condition as well. So if I pass where condition obviously I have to pass ID control space you will do the ID is the employee ID is the field from the employee table uh, Z employee underscore RAM table I have to pass some employee ID here but where I will get this particular employee ID that's a very important thing. To get this particular employee ID let me do control shift less than I will first debug this particular thing control F3 and see where I am getting that employee ID number one from the URL to the my importing parameter. So that I have to change check. So for that let me go to there uh, either I can direct I, I will try to execute directly here. Uh, let me activate first this one control F3 got activated. What I will do uh, I will try to access the data only one and or two no, employee number two. And I will try to execute from here. As soon as I execute this one, you can see this breakpoint got triggered. This is hard coded breakpoint this time. You have to see importing and importing parameter and exporting parameter. You can go to the local. What all are the importing parameter based on the symbol? You can see this is the exporting parameter. You can see an entity set name uh, from which entity uh, it, it is called. And what is the shorts name? We will discuss shorts name when we discuss about the association and navigation. And this other thing we will discuss. But as of now, this IT key tape is important. This IT key tape data is filled here. You can see employee ID name and two. Because when we have to get the single entry from any table, we have to pass the key fields, all the key fields. In this case, we only have one key field, and that is the reason we have only one entry in IT key tape. If you have multiple key fields, in that case, this URI get little bit changed, control C and control V. In that case, you have to pass your, uh, suppose in this case, you have to pass employee ID, uh, EMP employee, employee ID equal to one. And if you have multiple field, you have to pass in comma separated list. There is, in this case, there is only one field, no need to worry. Yeah, it should be two. So like that also, it will also call the same. This both the URI are same only. It's not, there is no difference. So what I will do, I have to read this IT key tape. And again, I will use new syntax to read this particular table. So I will be having, so let me do control shift greater than. Uh, if I do F2 type of this one, what is the type of this one? This is TS employee and again this one. So I want to get the employee ID. So let me declare one uh, data emp underscore id that should be type of the uh, employee underscore ram control c uh, since it is variable I will give lv underscore emp underscore and I will give id type of this one and I will read this it underscore t tab key table because I know the data is available in it underscore key table. So let me go to it underscore key table. Uh, so this should be for reading this one control C control V equal to I will use again new syntax table expression we can say I have to pass here uh, there is a name and value I can see there is two values here one is the name if you open this table the name and value name is name should be this one. So let me pass name equal to if you do control space the help is avail available. You can pass name equal to you have to pass the name control V and once you pass the name you have to get the value control space you will do you will get the value and this particular value I want in L LV employee ID and that value I will be passing here in the ID and I will be get, getting the single entry from G employee underscore RAM that I will be putting in ER underscore entity. You can see ER underscore entity uh, which we have to fill. Let me go to the desktop one again and ER entity we have to fill. ER entity type of G employee ID. Currently it is blank because there is no code. Let me do here F8. 
and let me activate this one shift f1 let me do enter so it will be visible clearly let me do control f3 and let me execute re-execute again one more time currently i'm getting 404 error resource not found for this particular segment employee it's a standard error uh, we want to define our errors also that also we can define using the raise exceptions as of now we can see the standard error so let me re-execute this one okay entity set employee set let me get this particular two and try to re-execute breakpoint is not triggering let me go to se24 uh, breakpoint is still there no? se24 break tectomania place o se24 dpc extension class control and it will be at the end uh, i have implemented get entity as well so you can see in different color black color so let me put the break point here okay and uh, it's active currently now let me re-execute again hmm, uh, there is something missing let me put one more time break point here okay and let me go to again here and entity set name employee set uh, first execute this one this will call another method uh, let me do f8 i'm not worrying about this method as of now and let me call this single entity pass only two and let me execute here it should trigger breakpoint yeah now it got triggered so let me do f5 uh, i'm reading it underscore key tab as i told you there is two entry so i i'm, I'm getting the employee id that is two and i read the employee id number two and that that value i got in the er underscore entity you can see now it got filled and if i do f8 i will get the single entity result here you can see all the data employee id two name city what is the company department everything i'm getting over here so what else i can do uh, i can refresh here obviously i will get the same data uh, again the breakpoint will be triggered here because uh, we are calling from the browser we have put actional breakpoint so breakpoint got triggered i can do f8 again here and f8 one more time and you can see the data here you can see if you want to see the data in json format that also you can see you have to this is the, our first query option we are learning you have to put question mark dollar format equal to json json format it will it will be little bit not clumsy it will be very accurate data we will be able to see so that is the reason uh, we always see the data in the json format in all data v4 version by default all the data it is showing in the json format so that's again one more important thing let me do f8 f8 so you can see the data in json format it's a very clearer also i'm using black theme that is the reason in background is black you can see what oh, i got the employee id to name city and all other data I got from this particular get entity. So in this video, we only discuss about the MPC, DPC, X, DPC, MPC extensions and DPC extension classes. In my next video, not only we'll get that, as of now we have, we have get the data from the system. In my next video, we'll see how we can create this entry. I got this currently data from this particular employee table. Let me show you one, once again, this employee table. So if you see this data in this table, uh, employee number two, you see Rohit, Jodhpur, SAP Technomanic, all the detail I got. In next video, what I will do, I, I want to create new entry here. I want to modify any entry from here. And I want to modify any of the one of the fields or I want to delete any entry from here. How to do through the OData service, this table modifications. So those, those kind of card operation we can see as of now we saw one operation only that operation is get entity means uh, read operation in the card operation card means c means create r means read u means update c r u d means delete card we will other part 
apart from read create update and delete we will discuss in my next video before going to that video please like this video share this videos with others as well so they can also run with that thank you and happy learning